Hi everyone, thanks for checking out another InfoSec Hub video. Today we're going to talk about DHCP. And DHCP is standing for Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. Um, I will show you how to set it up. So we have our PFSense machine here. Um, I'm running it inside VirtualBox Manager. Uh, this is the server and this is the front end, so to speak. So let's sign in. And this is a PFSense machine that's not connected to the internet, but I can show you how certain services like DHCP work. Um, before I get into this protocol, because it is a protocol, every device on your network gets an IP address assigned. Um, like for instance, 192.168.11, right? That's a um, default configuration. And usually 11 is your router, your gateway, call it whatever you want. Um, PFSense is a router, is a gateway. So usually default, also when you bought a router, like a Wi-Fi access point or something like that, that also functions like a router. Normally, this is the default address. So let's go into services and we go to DHCP server. And here we have some general options when it comes to this DHCP server. So right out of the box, it says enable DHCP server on LAN interface. And I got to show you something. Uh, let me show you this. So you can also buy a PSense box like this, right? You, have, you see you got three NICs, network interface card. So a LAN, a WAN, and probably a management port just to manage this device. Uh, why is that? Well, um, we have the internal network, local area network here, and we have the WAN. And what sits between the local area network and the internet is this device. So this is the firewall, all... Um, all data has to go through the uh, this PFSense machine, which is basically a bridge. So you can do some filtering on this. You can set up DHCP, DNS, uh, IDES, uh, intrusion detection system, uh, intrusion prevention system, all kind of neat uh, stuff. Uh, but this is really in between networks. So your local network going to the internet has to go through this machine. That's why they also say here in PFSense, set it up on LAN interface, because you have a LAN and a WAN interface. Okay. So here it already talks about subnetting. So it see this is a range, a possible range, uh, and you can specify it like this. So, you know, one, 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 two, one, three, one, four, one, five, everything is still open. Uh, and you can make static IP addresses assigned to certain machines, like, like for instance, your your uh, DNS server, like your NAS, like all kind of stuff that you want to make sure that has static IPs. Uh, we're talking about DHCP, D standing for dynamic. So things might change. If you uh, log on to a network today and you get an IP address assigned, and half a year later, or maybe even one week later, you uh, sign up to the same network again, you might get a different IP address because it's dynamic and you get DHCP leases. Um, and you can also specify how long a lease uh, can take, maybe 24 hours, maybe um, 48 hours, maybe longer, but you decide. Here you see the available range. So here you see there are a couple of, like the couple of uh, addresses off and here there are a couple of addresses off. Um, why is that? So on, in the beginning of the range and at the end of the range, you have some IP addresses left over for static IP purposes. You want to make sure that your NAS is always reachable on the same IP address. So based on the MAC address of your um, network interface card and the MAC address is the hardware address of your hardware that will that's unique um, your NAS will always have the same IP address so when you have different systems like a Windows machine for instance uh, and you connect to the NAS regularly you always make sure that 
uh, this NAS is reachable on the same IP address. You got a few other options. Um, deny unknown clients. So based on a MAC address here, the MAC address, which is your hardware address of your network interface card. And if you don't know what that is, I will just type it in here. Nick card over here. This is your network card. This is, you know, the slot in the back of your uh, computer that looks like this. This is your NIC network interface card. This is how you connect to the internet. If you use a cable, of course, your Wi-Fi access point also has a NIC because it's a hardware address, right? Let's go back. So you can deny those clients if your PFSense machine doesn't know what kind of MAC address is this and it's not familiar with it, then it can deny it or it can ignore it. It really depends on what you want. Deny is just, okay, no traffic can go here and ignore. Uh, this option is not compatible with failover, cannot be enabled for failover. Okay. If a client includes a unique identifier in its DHCP request. So allow all clients, allow clients from any interface, allow clients only this interface. So why is this important? DHCP is given out to all clients on your network. So if you have a guest, uh, WLAN, like Wi-Fi, um, you, need the, you can't put these settings in because um, I explain. You connect to the, the access point and the access point detects the MAC address of your device. And if you deny it, then it can't get access to, uh, to the access point, basically. You still need to fill in your password and everything when you have a guest, uh, guest Wi-Fi uh, setup, just like me. You still need to put in your password. But then the PFSense machine detects this as a new MAC address. Um, if you put deny or ignore in there, it, it still won't get access. I hope that's clear. I hope so. But there are options here. Moving on. Additional pools. Um, you can set up different kind of ranges because you have this range, the 192.168.11 range. You have the 10.1.1.0 range. You have the 172, uh, 16, 18, whatever range. Uh, it really depends on what kind of network you're running. Again, I'm not a network guy, but you have uh, different kind of ranges. If you want an additional range, let's say, for instance, you have your own NAS, you have a DNS server, you have an FTP server, all that kind of stuff, and you have like several servers inside your home network, you can add a new pool, uh, and that will be your server pool. Okay, more about servers. WinS. So if you have a Windows server, you can put in here uh, certain, several addresses uh, that your server always have a static IP. Um, because this is very important, especially when you um, work with a NAT, network address translation. Let's say, for instance, you have an FTP server or a web server that uh, has to take requests from the internet you want to make sure that uh, every request from the outside always go back to one fixed uh, IP, right? Uh, you don't want this dynamic because you can't set it up basically in your DNS, in your firewall and stuff like that. So here you have two ways to add Windows servers. In the previous video, we talked about DNS servers. Um, you can use your own DNS, uh, maybe have a program running that's called PyHole. I've been doing that. Um, again, this is my own PFSense machine, WAN and LAN, so a dual NIC. Check out this video, um, I made it a while ago, but my own PFSense machine. So this is the NIC interface card, we talked about this. Uh, Pi-hole and network wide ad blocking, and it can also make sure that these DHCP and DNS is enabled. Use Pi-hole as your DNS server. So you can block advertisements on the DNS level. So advertisements will not even be loaded in because on the DNS, the name servers, 
um, it will be blocked on that level, which is great, which means that on a central point, a lot of stuff has been blocked and you, on, you don't need uh, ad blockers on any client, if that makes any sense. You do it on the network level, so it will not even reach your computer. But Pi-hole is also for DNS, so I run Pi-hole as well. I made a video about this earlier. So if you have a Pi-hole machine running on Ubuntu server, for instance, you can uh, put the address in here and um, PFSense will use that uh, DNS server setting. Um, if you have a gateway specified, anything other than uh, PFSense, you can put it in here. Uh, what else can we talk about? Um, Mac address control, you can set it up. If you have a dynamic DNS server, uh, you can set it up here. NTP network, uh, network time protocol. Um, your cell phone, your computer, uh, lots of electronic stuff that's connected to the internet use NTP. Uh, it's, it's the same as the atomic clock, basically. But if you want all the clients in your network to connect to the PFSense machine and that this PFSense machine redistributes the correct time, uh, you can set it up here. So this is really what we talked about earlier, uh, which I showed you. The PFSense machine, okay, it's gone now, but PFSense machine dual NIC. Just like this. LAN 1, 3, 2, 3, 4. And these might only be uh, there for the internet traffic and this might be management port, right? This is also how you can buy it. WAN, LAN, OPT, optional or... You can buy them like this, PFSense. It's already loaded, it's all on there and you got all the latest and the greatest. You can also build your own board. Anyway, we're getting off subject. So DNS static mapping for this interface. So this is all DHCP, how to set it up. I can't show you any DHCP leases, but I do want to show you that. So it only connected one DHCP lease. Um, and that's because I'm connected to this PFSense machine. You see, this is a hack virtual box. That's how I call my uh, machine that I'm working on right now, Ubuntu. Uh, but this will this will list all the clients that are connected to your device. So if you have a phone, you have a laptop, you have a tablet, whatever it might be, and you connect to the Wi-Fi or you plug your computer into the network by a cable, uh, you see all the leases. So um, you see here the host name, which makes you determine what kind of uh, client it is. In this case, again, this is the server. You're looking at the interface and I'm viewing this in Ubuntu and I call this one hack because it is what it is. Uh, but you can see here all the leases are used, clear DHCP leases. Um, so if I connect to this machine, if this was a production machine in let's say uh, half an hour, I would get the same IP again because it remembers me based on the MAC address Maybe within 24 hours, I still get the same uh, IP address. Uh, and that's just, this is where it's all about. That's all dynamic. But when you have a server in place, which I talked about earlier, you want a static IP because you always want to make sure that you reach all the resources on that server on the same IP address. You don't want to be fidgeting around. You don't want to use certain network uh, scanning tools to find where the server is located. But when you have... When you have a phone, for instance, which you connect almost every evening, uh, and even if you're not home for three weeks, you come home, it, it will be assigned an IP address. might not be the same, but you will not notice it. You still get internet connectivity based on your MAC address. You got certain privileges, uh, which we'll come to later in another video when we talk about PF blocker, which is the firewall function. But these are the basics. DNS for DNS queries and DHCP, which is a network service for assigning IP addresses to clients. Um, what more is there? I think that that was it. A little bit more. This is the WAN interface. So internet, this is the LAN interface. Uh, static IP4, it can go DHCP. You can set static. Uh, 
point to point, uh, different kind of protocols. Uh, it even uh, supports IPv6, but not many people work with it yet. And here you have the configuration, and this is the IP address of uh, the interface here that you see as well. So several things are, um, are possible. Block private networks and loopback. Always make sure you check this box, block Bogon networks, things that are not assigned by this RFC code. I, what's this again? This is the internet agency or something like that. I do have internet. Let me show you. Almost there, guys. Internet Assigned Numbers Authority. So, <laughs> if you got an um, IP address or something that's not being assigned, you got a big problem. So, make sure that when you uh, set up PFSense, uh, don't forget this tab. Interfaces, LAN, WAN, and save it. Apply changes. I think we're there, guys. DHCP. So, again, I can show you something. DHCP server. Uh, yes. Yeah, this is basically what it is. Uh, visit. Hopefully, this is big enough. Come on. So this is a DHCP server. Here you see the IP 192.168.1.100. This is 101.102. And it, it really defines it on base of the MAC address of your network interface card. And you can all set it up inside PFSense. Used to be um, back in the day before PFSense, it's, it's all on the router. Um, or you really had a dedicated machine. When you maybe go back to the uh, mid-90s, you had a dedicated machine. It was really a machine, which was a server, and it would detect, especially when you want to have a little bit of a pri private network that you only accept clients that you know, you have to have a DHCP server there, uh, making sure that it signs all the IP addresses based on the MAC address, which is a unique address. I can't stress that enough. But... PewSense has it all built in. This is great software. Um, yeah, this is basically concludes my video. Uh, I want to thank you for watching and uh, we hope you have a great weekend. If you have any questions or any suggestions for future videos, please let me know. Thanks for watching and we hope to see you guys in the next one.